Normally, I'm a really quiet person, but the pandemic hit me hard. It hit everyone hard. Like many people, I was found with a lot more time on my hands than anticipated. Sure, a lot of it was spent doing college work, but I soon found myself bored. I guess a few of my friends did as well, because, after much persuasion, I found myself buying the latest horror game for VR. I knew spending money was really bad right now, but I was okay. I had a good savings built up. So when this game came up for the third time, I finally caved and bought the game and headset. The headset was like your typical VR headset. It had straps and the standard goggles that went around your head. There were no extra controllers, which I found a little odd. One of my friends, who we're called Riley, already had the headset game combo and said it was great. With much reluctance, we also convinced our other friend, who we call Cameron. He was very reluctant to get the game at first. It took a bit of bribing to get him to join, but he ended up buying it as well. The first day I played the game was Halloween. I took off the day from school, silenced my phone, and set up my living room for VR playing. I sent a quick message in our group chat to make sure the others were ready as well. While I waited for a response, I tied my hair back in a long braid and set it on the couch for some classic YouTube. Finally, both Riley and Cam confirmed that they were ready. Navigating to our group chat's voice channel, I set myself up with my headset, sliding it over my head and adjusting the fit. The sound of the others joining the call echoed through the headset speakers. The screen was currently black, and we had agreed that Riley would set it up, since he had better internet. I was home due to the virus, and managed to have the night free from my family. Can you guys hear me? I asked tentatively, waiting for their replies. Yes, came Cam's first, followed shortly by Riley. Okay, then I'm ready. The black screen was getting disorienting, and I wanted to get into the game quickly. I heard Riley tap a few keys on his keyboard, and then the screen changed. We were greeted with a generic, simplistic loading screen. It displayed the game's author and company name briefly, before the effect of flickering lights turned it off. I hope you guys also turned off your lights, I muttered. It's really dark in here. Yeah, same here, Riley said. I have a nightlight on, but that's about it, Cam admitted, which made me laugh. Of course you'd leave a light on, I teased. Come on, this game can't be that scary. The banter was interrupted by the main menu of the game. Riley quickly tapped a few more keys and created us a lobby, and our characters soon spawned in. We were outside in a truck, with Riley as the driver and myself in the passenger seat. Cam was in the back, peering through the windows. We're in the front of the house, he observed. How do you move again? Uh, you kind of just do, Riley said. It's subconscious, really. It's really quite cool, don't you think? Kind of weird, I admitted, testing it out by moving my arm in-game. I felt completely submerged in the game. I knew I was standing in my living room, in front of my computer, but it was as if I wasn't consciously aware of my environment outside the game. It was very disorienting, but I didn't say anything, because I didn't want to chicken out. Earth to Ev, Cam was waving a hand in front of my face. Are you coming or what? The passenger side of the truck was opened, and Riley was already outside, holding two flashlights. Sorry, just tired, I lied, carefully exiting the vehicle. Riley handed me the flashlight, which I turned off and on. Then I turned around and looked at the house before us. This map for the game had a farmhouse standing directly in front of us, off a narrow road that was blocked off by some fences. The log cabin was two-storey and had a few windows lining the front. The three of us hesitated on the front porch, peering in one of the windows. Well, I'm not going in first, Cam admitted. No way. Scaredy cat, I muttered, stepping in front and opening the door. The first thing I noticed was the sound. It was like stepping into a different world, fully submerging myself into the deep end that was this game. I lost all connection with reality, and my focus was the house in front of me. Directly in front of me was the living room. It was small, with a fireplace on the wall 
to the right with a big glass window centered in front. Two flowery faded curtains lined the window. The living room looked like my grandma decorated it, a worn looking couch surrounded by two wooden tables. In front of the window was a rocking chair, exactly the kind of creepy chair you didn't want to find in any haunted house. Next to us in the door was a small foyer, with a staircase leading up to the upper floor. Next to the living room was another small hallway that led off somewhere to the right. After taking in the small house, I entered cautiously. My hand brushed a light switch, which made me flinch. Recovering quickly before either of my friends noticed, I flicked the switch and light flooded the small foyer. Let there be light, I exclaimed dramatically, flourishing my hands as if doing some kind of magic trick. Riley rolled his eyes, while Cam just laughed at my corny joke. The game was simple. We had to investigate the house, find paranormal evidence, and then we could leave. Any ghosts inside had a chance of killing us after a period, but that was fine. It was just VR. We would be able to view our friend's perspective if we died. It was just a creepy game that we could turn off at any point if we got too scared, right? I ventured forward towards the living room. In this game, each of us was equipped randomly with ghost hunting equipment. I had a camera, Cam had an EMF reader, and Riley had a spirit box to communicate with any ghosts inside. I'll go upstairs, Riley volunteered, slowly creeping up the stairs. The distinctive old house creaks filled the silence as he advanced. Cam opened the door to the left and peered inside. Huh, it's a kitchen. You think there's food? How can you eat food in VR? I asked. Well, you can try. And with that, I was left alone as he disappeared in search of virtual food. The house had been abandoned for some time. According to the game's description, the owners had just upped and left. In the living room, a few magazines were scattered on the coffee table, and a blanket was thrown haphazardly on the couch. Suddenly, the light in the foyer flickered off. I let out a startled shout against my will, as I was once more plunged into darkness. Cam poked his head out of the kitchen, and I turned to face him. What happened? The light went out. I went forwards towards the lamp, pulling the string. I think the power's out. We were each equipped with walkie-talkies in order to communicate better. I unclipped it from my belt and held the button. Riley, the power's out. Do you know where the switch is? Nope. It's pitch black up here, even with the flashlight. I wonder if there are any ghosts up here, came his tinny response in the small radio. Probably, I mused. I mean, that's typical for horror games, right? Cam had exited the kitchen, and I followed him to the stairs. I shined my flashlight up the stairs, peering upwards to the landing. It was as if light was sucked up by the infinite darkness, and I shuddered a little. It really is dark up there, Cam said into the walkie, echoing my thoughts. I led the way up the stairs, with Cam shortly behind, and we ascended upwards. The darkness poured around us, as if the shadows themselves were a pool and we were entering it deeper. Our flashlight beams meandered left and right until they fell across Riley's form, who was posed at a closed door. Guys, he whispered as we approached. There's something in there. Listening quietly, I could hear it. There was quiet sobbing coming from within this room. Well, that'll do it. There's definitely something in there, I whispered hoisting up my video camera from around my neck. I pressed a button and it whirred to life. Then I slowly nudged the door open with my foot. The crying immediately stopped, and I immediately noticed something was wrong. Because I could smell it. The god-awful scent of an old musty room, mixed with the smell of rotten meat, hit me like a punch to the face. I backed up, bumping into Riley as I retreated from the room. What the hell is that? I shouted as I stumbled backwards. How was that even possible? Somewhere in the distance, I heard a door slam shut, but my brain was too preoccupied with the smell to understand what was happening. Neither replied, as were both gagging, retreating further down the hallway, until they left me alone 
in front of the door. I slammed it shut, following them back towards the stairs. The three of us, holding our noses and coughing from the horrific smell, raced towards the front door. Cam, who was in the lead of the mad dash to escape, suddenly stopped, causing Riley and I to run into him. I can't open the door, he cried, pulling frantically on the now closed door. Well, let's just take off our headsets, Riley suggested, as if on cue. The three of us reached up to take off our headsets. I could feel my fingers close around the straps, pull them over my head, temporarily disoriented by the darkness in my living room. But instead of being in front of my computer, I was back in the truck, Riley next to me, with Cam in the back. Hello listeners. If you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the description. For more content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more sinister readings.